Cash Nation, I've just seen Bill Juice, Bill Juice. Was it that good? Where's Beetlejuice? Where's Beetlejuice? Beetlejuice. Feel free to express yourselves. Don't be afraid. You're a figment of my imagination. Really? Is this a figment of your imagination? Cash Nation, welcome back to a brand new review on the channel. Today we're talking about Bill Juice, Bill Juice. Now, you know me, I've been reacting to the trailers, talking nonstop about this movie. How excited I'm going into this, okay? I've just seen the recent film that came out 30 years ago. So my brain was fresh on everything. I had information I needed to know. Walking this film. Now the question remains, is this worth your ticket of admission? Or is it something you watch for the comfort of your own home? We're getting to that much more in today's review, starting with the good, which is I love, I love Bill Juice in this movie, okay? Michael Keaton hasn't missed a beat, hasn't skipped a step. He is on his A game in this movie. Every scene with Bill Juice, I was laughing hilariously with Gabby, okay? His one-liners, this simple and small joke that he made but there's two specific things he did this film that had me at the edge of my seat laughing hysterically the first scene takes place with Lydia Deeds and the, the new fiance if you will the guy in the film I remember his name right and it's a scene where Bill Juice does something to Lydia that literally I was on the floor almost laughing in tears my stomach was hurting how funny it was okay in the second trailer he says basically you know tell the truth or spill your guts right in that exact same scene he does something to Lydia that you don't see in the trailer that had me rolling on the floor laughing okay there's a second scene where a character in this film does something mischievous and bad, and I can't give anything away. And I love how they think they're about to get to the finish line. And then all of a sudden, hey, this character, don't let him get to the finish line. And literally, when you think he's at the finish line, when you think he's won, when you think he's done everything he can, let's just say he was out of luck. If you know the reference, you know, okay? Barbara O'Hara in this film, I thought she was, she was solid. I think at the first act, she was okay as you know but the rest of the movie she doesn't skip a b everything she says in this film everything she reacts with is how i react to this film right the thing she replies to the characters with like the, the one-liners that's how i felt that's how i feel right now like how did she know as the audience how you're we feeling you know what i'm saying she's excellent she's great and i loved her so much she's hysterical she's weird she's obnoxious and i loved her so much for that okay now i gotta talk about the bad stuff Wyanna Ryder, she, she missed a step. She missed a whole bunch of steps, okay? Because the first couple acts of this film bothered me greatly because the whole time, she's so dumb. She really is. She just has this thing going with her life. I won't give anything away. But it's like the gift that she was given, you would think with what she's doing in her current life, they would explore that more and talk about more that don't afford to, okay? Because it's like in the very first act of the film, here's what's going on with her. And it's like, what, what, explore this more. Give me more details. Give me more juice. Give me more things to, t you know, talk about, you know? And it's kind of like, oh, that's what we're doing? Okay, that's just kind of weak to me, you know? The fiance. Again, I'll talk about him right now. I didn't care for him. I didn't care for his performance. I thought the writing for him was terrible. If he was out of the movie, the movie would have been 10 times better because i wish that it was just the the family itself you know you know Ryan Ryder, astrid as in john ortega and barbara Hare. we have the fiance unfortunately who was just constantly trying to manipulate but why Ryder to get his way and do what he, get what he wants in life. Jenna Ortega, I gotta say, I didn't care for her much. I thought by the second, the third act of the film, she was solid, but the first act, I didn't care for it at all. I didn't. I thought her performance was serviceable at best. To me, she just doesn't really do much, talk much. There are things about her character. There's issues between her and her mom. What's told us what the issue is, and it's just like, to me, I didn't need her in the film. I didn't care for her in the film at all. And there's a reveal about her in the film. Even the reveal is just like, cool. Cool, I guess, you know? Monica Bellucci, Ramon Defoe, did not need to be in this film. I'm putting them in the same category because they had the same exact issue. They had their own storylines, the same trajectory, 
tried to do one thing only, right? Maka Bellucci, there is a cameo in this film that they wasted, of course. That involved Maka Bellucci and someone else, okay? The only reason why she's in the film that I care a little bit about is to give you the origin of Beetlejuice. That's literally it. The rest of her plot, the rest of her storyline did not care for it at all. Okay, because essentially you have two different characters who are both Mario Bellucci is doing this one specific thing. Every scene does same thing, same thing, same thing, right? And then by the end of like, honestly, what was the point of her? What was the point of her being the film? Serve no purpose. Like I could skip all the scenes with Papa Cash, show the before and after. Then he tell you, I didn't need their scenes. They're there for no reason, right? Will the foe, same problem. He has a role in the film as an actor slash cop. I can't say what she is without spoiling it for you. And to me, he just, he's there, does his thing. Doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It serves no purpose to the overall plot. Like, let, let me say this much. If you're watching this from home, you can skip their scenes. Skip every bit of their scenes because it does nothing to do with the plot. Nothing at all, okay? I mean, there's a storyline with a boy that Jared Tegan meets that was very interesting. And I'm like, we could have taken out all of Monica and one of the four scenes combined, get rid of all of them, added more to his character and his thing. It would have made the film so much more better because clear or not, the one storyline that actually hooked me the most was the boy. But the boy in this film that we meet, I was like, okay, cool. That was interesting, you know? Comedy this film, there's multiple scenes in the first act specifically that I was like, this isn't funny. This is supposed to be funny. And the only time it's funny for me specifically is literally either when Barbara O'Hara speaks or when Beetlejuice speaks when they do something, okay? That's it. I didn't care for it. And by the way, before I forget, they do reference and talk about specific things from the first film. They do address what happens to both uh, Alec Baldwin and his wife in the first film. So if you're wondering, they're gonna watch the first film, enjoy this film. I would say not really. I mean, you can follow along pretty easily. It's not like, oh God, if you don't watch the first film, you're completely screwed with this film. No, you don't watch the first film, but just watch a recap. That, that's really all there is too, you know? Again, this film, I would not say watch it in theaters. I would say watch it for the copy of your own whole because Bill Juice rocks in this movie 100%, okay? But you only get so little time with him and more time with other characters where it's like, there was at least 60% of this movie I did not care for at all, right? There's just too many cooks in the kitchen. There just is. The second and third act, I liked the first act. I didn't care for it at all. Kind of just like, come on, come on, come on. I said to Jaren, this film felt like there was two wee cooks in the kitchen. And for that reason only, I have to give Bill Juice, Bill Juice, an unfortunate four out of 10. I said five, it's a four out of 10. But again, Bill Juice, Bill Juice, unfortunately, isn't as good as the first one. And that's that. So again, Cast Nation, please, please, please do me a favor and comment your thoughts. Did you watch it? And if so, what was your favorite and least favorite part about the film? Okay. But as always, thank you for watching. Like, subscribe for more reviews coming to the very near future. Peace.